In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In this section of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is contrasting the Jewish leaders of the time and the Jews who go astray and then repent. Think about the two sons in last week's Gospel. One says yes to the Father, gives Him lip service, and then fails to execute the Father's will. The other says no, and then has a change of heart, repents, and executes the Father's will, producing good fruit in the vineyard. The other context for today's Gospel is a broader context, one that's not theological but social And worth noting here, Jesus tells a story about a landowner, an allegory or a parable. The commentators argue as to which it is. Tells a story about a landowner. And they would have been, the the audience would have been familiar with this story. A landowner leases out the property to farmers, to tenants, in exchange for part of the profit, part of the harvest. And if the tenants don't pay up, the landowner will evict them, get new tenants, oftentimes forcibly and violently, This is what the landowner is expected to do. To go to the the vineyard and forcibly and violently remove the tenants. After reciting part of Psalm 118, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is where I think it turns to be more of a parable because it turns upside down the prevailing expectation. Instead of removing the tenants by force, God simply reassigns authority. Jesus says the kingdom of God the rule of God, the rule over the law, that Mosaic law we heard about in Exodus today, the heart of that Mosaic law, the Ten Words or Ten Commands, the Ten Commandments. The kingdom of God, the rule over that law, will be taken away from you and given to a people that produce fruits of the kingdom. This really is less punitive than it is a loving act, a compassionate act of our God. A God whose original desire is to go, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth with good things. That is God's original blessing, original desire of God's heart. And if those who were given the authority to fill the earth with good things aren't up for the challenge, God will reassign that authority. Let's consider the rose in this city of the roses we are. I think, and, and, uh, and our resident expert on roses, Rick Thomas, is here and, and can correct me on, on this, but I, I believe that the quality of a prize-winning rose, and I believe he's had many prize-winning roses over the years, 
depends a great deal on the quality of the soil in which that rose bush is planted. A rich and fertile soil is more likely to produce a prize-winning rose. A depleted and lacking soil is less likely to produce the same. Like that soil, if the kingdom of God, the rule or the authority over the law and tradition is not tended properly, is not cultivated and cared for, it will produce less than a quality fruit or no fruit at all. And God's desire for us is abundant fruit. The Jewish leaders of the time were caretakers of the law, which we heard about in Exodus, the soil. And their interpretation, their interpretation, at least here in Matthew, is more about self-preservation, preserving the systems of power they held than about loving God and loving neighbor. Therefore, it failed to produce fruits of the kingdom of God. Remember, the battle of the day in this Smithian community was one which pitted the Jewish leader and pitted against, really, the Jewish leader and the followers of Jesus. Who are these followers of Jesus? Last week, we heard about the son who said no and then repented, meeting the father's demand. We heard about the tax collectors and prostitutes, those sinners who repented. Jesus identifies some of those followers of Jesus as sinners. Jesus ate with those sinners and tax collectors. They were among his closest friends and confidants and apostles. The followers of Jesus were those looked upon as sinners at the time. The story that Jesus tells, notice, did not have God excommunicate or ban the chief priests and the elders, the religious leaders of the time, but instead simply reassigns their authority to the sinners. In other words, the law and the tradition, tending that, caring for that tradition, is under new management. That new management of the law The kingdom of God is all people of God. If we fast forward to today, that is us. And by us, I don't mean simply the the Episcopal Church or the wider Church Catholic or even Christians alone, but all people of God in whatever form they may take. They are the new ones who tend the law, tend that soil, care for our tradition. So the question for us today has to do with our fidelity to how we interpret the law. And we can measure that by looking at the fruits of the kingdom of God in our own lives. What about the little part of our world for which we are responsible or the part which we have been given to cultivate, to tend? Here in Thomasville, here at St. Thomas, 
are the fruits of the kingdom of God evident in that slice of the pie? I think if yesterday's activities around here in this small place are any indication, there are many fruits of the kingdom of God. I would say yes, the hungry were fed in our lunch program. Yes, the naked are clothed. Yes, strangers were welcome. Yes, we prayed with strangers who came to the yard sale. Yes, we prayed together here as we contemplated worship. What about when we examine a wider audience? Are we faithful stewards of the law in our homes, in the city, in the wider Episcopal Church and Anglican Communion in our world. The question I want to take home today from these Scriptures, and I invite you to take home as well, is to ask ourselves, where are the good fruits of the Kingdom of God in our lives? Really, what are they? Can we name them? Can we specifically identify them in our lives? And if we struggle to do so, if we struggle to identify the fruits of the kingdom of God in our lives, in our family, in our city, in our community, in our church, then we must ask ourselves, does the law of God even have a place in our lives? Or are we like the one son last week who gives much lip service to the kingdom of God and fails to apply it in our day-to-day lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.